format anyway, then you'll want to have your reason, you'll want to back that up with some examples. And then you'll have your conclusion, and it summarizes those main points in new language. You don't want to just repeat exactly what you said at the beginning. You want to have similar points, but in different words. You might end with an image, a call to action or a suggestion, a scenario, a quote, or a restatement of why the main idea is important. So, for example, if I were trying to convince the mayor of the city to clean up a park, I would say, imagine the beautiful park, all the leaves swept off, the lovely sparkling pathways, and happy families with young children giggling as they walk along. So I might have a scenario, an imaginative scene, that would help the mayor see why he needs to clean up the park, a quote or a restatement of why the main idea is important. For example, if I were responding to a prompt that said, Try to convince your audience why um, computer games are important. And I would say, so next time you are about to scold your kid for wasting time on computer playing games, take a moment to consider what kind of skills you want him or her to develop. Now, choosing the right words. So you can get by responding to a prompt by just knowing your audience, knowing your purpose, and making a good outline. But it's also important to make sure that you have good word usage and good word choice. When I say word choice, what does that mean? What she say? Word choice. Word choice. What does word choice mean? To describe. To describe. Describe things. Well, using good word choice means that you don't use the same words over and over again. So you don't say the house is big. The house was cool. Inside there were lots of pieces of furniture that were really big and cool. So you don't use things two times in the same paragraph, et cetera. So it's not repeating words, not using the same words, using a variety of words, and it's also using the most specific, most descriptive, in other words, the best words for that use. So, um, for example, use specific words. I know the font is a little hard to see, but instead of saying dog, you might say pit bull or bulldog. Um, instead of just talking about the fire, you could say the crackling fire. Um, I love words like shimmering, cedar, console, uh, snot. Okay, that one was a little gross. But when you use specific words, you allow your readers to see exactly what you're talking about. So let's say I just said, oh, I walked into the house, it was cool. That's pretty boring. What about if you could say, I leapt into the house with a great roar and saw the crackling fire in the hearth and the... Um, sweet scented smell of the cedar walls. Okay, so when you're able to use these specific words to convey your emotions, what you're feeling, and what a place looks like, and exactly what's there, the reader is able to see it more. For example, the word nice. I use nice a lot, I have to admit, but that could be replaced by a word that describes in which way the experience was positive. So when you say nice, do you mean exciting, peaceful, safe, Beautiful, amazing, colorful, cozy. So, give me another substitution for nice. What else could you say instead of nice? What? Gorgeous. Gorgeous, very good. So, if you see something really beautiful and start saying, oh, that's nice, you could say, that is gorgeous. And it would convey it better. What is something else you could use to replace nice? Outstanding. Outstanding. So maybe if something really exceeds your expectations, if it's a lot better than you thought it would, it's outstanding. Great. And one more word you could use instead of nice. Pretty. Pretty, you could use that. That one is used quite a bit, but you could use instead of nice to convey that something is beautiful or um, really um, incredible. Word. Yeah. So there are lots of different things you could use to replace the word nice, which is overused. When you're responding to a prompt, avoid using words like nice, cool, stuff, things. Be more specific. Say, it was a gorgeous gown, instead of, it was cool stuff, if you are uh, right, responding to a prompt in order to make it better. Tip number three, replace general words with specific words. Now, what is an example of a general word? When I say general word, what, what does that mean? 
one that is used a lot? Oh. Well, not necessarily. General words often are used a lot. By general, I mean one that isn't very specific. It's a big word. Like, for instance, stuff. There are probably millions of things that could be stuff. And things is another one of them. A book could be stuff. The sweater I'm wearing could be stuff. A computer could be stuff. So that is a very general word. It encompasses a lot. A specific word would be a laptop computer as opposed to stuff. And you want to replace general words with specific words. So for example, a general word might be dog. You could replace that with poodle. Tree, you could replace that with elm. Nice with friendly. Loud with booming. There are many general words that we use quite often. So for instance, if you said somebody or person, think what is that somebody or what is that person's name? And uh, that is one way that you can make words more specific. So does anybody want to think of a general word that you can make more specific? <laughs> 